So today I'm more in a mood to talk about equity. Welcome to Subramani, and uh, if you have not yet clicked on the bell icon, please do so. So, what are the things which are hurting people now? One, they saw the market go down in March, and they saw the recovery in April, right? So, why do people sell? when the market goes up after a fall is to say oh my god let me at least protect whatever i have so this is what we call uh, loss uh, risk of loss aversion we don't we hate losing money so not earning money is okay you had 10 lakhs lying in your savings bank account you did not invest it anywhere and at that time the market went up all that is fine you don't feel terrible about it but suppose you had gone and bought 100 shares of a company and that did very well then you would have regret oh god why did i buy just 100 shares i could have bought 200 or 500 or 1000 whatever you can afford so you don't miss those other companies which have actually done better than this but this which you bought 100 shares is saying i wish i had bought more i wish i had bought more biocon i wish i had bought more uh, mind tree whatever whatever be the share right these are just examples which uh, came to mind because uh, or why didn't i buy why didn't i sell lmw that can be the other one so i have done a separate post on uh, that so i have a look at that so these are all the things that people feel that i should not lose money i mean in the short run also which means i want a company or i want a share which will give me ppf like returns during bad years and uh, sensational returns uh, like a tesla during good times such a product does not exist at all so you will have to take the good and the bad so one is this uh, loss aversion i would call it when uh, i would call it a little myopic because uh, it's only in the short run that you are worried about that in the longer run you are not worried about that and then you get used to it also after you if a share you have bought at say 800 or 900 has fallen to 300 or 400 and then it goes up to 500 you are in absolutely no mood you are at peace with yourself saying ah oh, i will sell it only after it reaches uh, 800 because that is my cost you know my share my cost the world does not know you world does not know your share portfolio world does not know your price please don't cling on to something like that so this myopic uh, loss aversion because in the short run you want to protect your money in the long run you want to grow your money this is not going to happen if you want your money to grow in the long run you have to learn to live with volatility in the short run this combination of saying like there is a tamil saying uh that it is a, like a guy waiting at the edge of the shore waiting for the waves to stop so that he can have a bath the sea waves continue 24 by 7 markets continue to be volatile jp morgan said this i think about 150 years ago i'm not very sure about the dates uh, i have to look at the dates and when he was asked how do you think the markets will be he said volatile and i don't think that answer has changed you ask me today you ask me after 100 years i'm going to say the same thing the markets will be volatile you have to control your emotions right so it is fairly obvious that uh, in the month of march if you sold you would feel miserable but if you didn't sell and you saw the prices falling you would have felt uh, bad then you in the month of april you would have felt relief thank god it is upar aa gaya but in june when the market rally the first thing you will do is to say let me sell some shares and protect my capital this protect my capital is so true especially in the short run you know you have a good portfolio you know 2021 is going to be bad you know you are going to hold it till 2050 that is the next 30 years but still this one year volatility is going to bother you and you will justify your broker will justify saying sir why don't you book some profits after that if the market comes down you can always buy this is an amazing piece of shit advice how do you know that the market is now not at the bottom or at the top you don't know you know it only in retrospect so the fact that you did not sell in march should not make you feel so guilty that in the month of june you sell off everything remember there is a story of uh, or rather you have all heard this saying better safe than sorry now imagine two men standing at the bottom of a tree and looking at an animal which looks like a tiger but you're not sure whether it's a tiger or a deer so both of you climb up the tree to a safe place and then you find it's a deer so then one of the guys the other guy would have said ha ah, better safe than sorry 
but don't look at it that way now. Today you have a portfolio. Suppose you have 100 rupees in equities and you think market has peaked out and it is only going to go further down because of corona or whatever reasons. You need not sell 100. You can always sell 20%. You can always sell 10%. That percentage game is possible. In life and death, it is a question of did or a da. If it turned out to be a tiger instead of a deer, you would have been killed. And since it was a deer, the only thing which got wasted was the effort of climbing up the tree, right? Similarly, in your portfolio of 100 rupees, book profits or whatever you want to do with 5%, 10% of the portfolio. Let the remaining portfolio remain. It doesn't matter because if it's a good share, good portfolio, chances are the prices will come back, right? I mean, you know it's your good portfolio. I'm not even getting into what is a good portfolio. I'm saying you think it's a good portfolio, therefore you have invested, therefore for the long run, so it should not really matter. So, so what all should you do? First of all, you should learn how to uh, deal with the media. The media will keep throwing something at you. Today, it is impossible to keep the media out, right? Once upon a time, it was only television which you had, which you watched or had to watch. Today, it can come to you on your phone. So, through a WhatsApp, somebody will send you a small PPT or send you some clipping of somebody saying. Markets are doomed and somebody else saying markets are going to boom, right? The coronavirus has been conquered, the vaccine has been found. And then some doctor will, doctor friend, like I have doctor friend, so he says, even if the coronavirus uh, is conquered by a vaccine, how you will need booster of that uh, vaccine every three months because that is the uh, impact that is going to this has not like a chicken box or something that you take it once and then for the rest of your life you don't need it. So how many booster doses will you take, right? So you don't have an answer to any of these questions. So all this is playing in your mind. You're close to your goal. You need the money in 2022. So you're saying if the market falls in 2021, what happens? I won't have money in 2022. So you can find your own reasons for buying and selling, but don't sell just to book profits and say, uh, largely you're trying to fight loss aversion as long as you know that you're trying to fight loss aversion you will not make the mistake of saying okay let me uh, let me let me sell something the other problem is you do a lot of research and you decide to buy a particular anything anything and uh, then you meet a friend of yours who comes and says oh I'm, I didn't buy but my wife drives this car so do you want to check out how it is and then you find that uh, she says, oh, this is a problem, the dealer was not good, etc. So all the anger that she has on the dealer has come out to you. So all your other 30 inputs are completely ignored because this lady, you don't even know her. You don't even know whether she's a good driver or a bad driver, whether she, her judgment should be taken. But suddenly she's the first hand experience. You feel, ah, now let me change my mind. This is wrong. This is not the way to look at your portfolio. Look at your portfolio in total. Do you need the money? If you don't need the money, leave it there, right? But if you think the company is bad, the company is going to be impacted and the price in the uh, impact is not yet there in the price, then maybe it's a good uh, share to sell, right? For example, if you think Indian hotels will not revive for a very long period of time or East India hotels will not revive for a very long period of time or specialty restaurants won't revive for a long period of time, because they are in the hospitality business, so be it, sell. But have that logic as to why you sold and uh, you are also assuming that it is not in the price and I am assuming that it is already in the price, what is the point in selling now? So both of us with the same data and the same level of understanding react differently because we think, I think everything is priced in and you think no, everything is not yet priced in, so you are happy to sell, right? So let me... So the kind of uh, information that is thrown at you, the kind of data that is thrown at you, don't let it impact so badly that you come to wrong conclusion. If you think there are some people who always talk negative, stay away from them. If, if you think there are some people who are always very overly positive, if you want to talk to him, great, but then talk to the other guy immediately after so that you come down to earth and you're not, uh, you know, you're not overly optimistic or overly pessimistic then you will always have people saying oh no no but that is not a problem this time it is different you know corona we will never be able to conquer it is end of the world that's fine let the world end if the world is anyway going to end in the next six months will your asset allocation really matter so 
don't bother too much don't bother about the latest information you get or something like that doesn't matter if you got good quality information which is 3 uh, weeks old it is much better than getting current information which you are not sure whether the source is correct whether his understanding is correct right so be careful about all these things this is a very important uh, these are very important things to know while creating your portfolio so thank you